classic thing about IG's lineup is that you play incredibly heavy teamfight together with a Spectre. So then any sort of teamfights or any sort of tower defenses you will need to to start doing at about 15 minutes into the game, you can take with your four heroes and Spectre can haunt in. So you, you just secure... You don't get run over in mid-game, and then you is just in the bag, because Spectre is arguably, in most cases, one of the absolute best late gamers. This hero goes scales so incredibly well, and is also one of the best heroes to get the Aegis on. Now, they are Radiant, though, but with the new Roshan change, perhaps it's a little bit easier for IG to uh, to try to grab the Aegis this game. Yeah, definitely. I do want to mention, it's very early, extremely early, and these are pubs, but Spectre is the second highest win rate on the new patch so far. 61.89% with... 5,700 games played, so not going to read too much into it, but just want to throw it out there as an interesting piece of info. That's really good, yeah. That's a pretty damn high pub win rate. Uh, Omni Knight is the leader at 65%, so... Uh, he, and I think the reason for that, actually, is just that towers give less gold, mainly, and that it's harder to push, because, of course, that speaks to Spectre's strengths, which is get to late game, get a couple of big items, and then you start taking ridiculous team fights. The way you usually dealt with Spectre was either you completely shut her down in lane, or you take the tower so early that the Radiance comes too late. Uh, but now in the new metagame, and especially with Newbie's lineup, which kind of only has one pusher in the Jakiro who's even a support, I think I favor IG's draft in this game. I think the, the Dire will have a really hard time dealing with the Spectre later on, and she even gets a dual lane mid with the Lich. Yeah, that's going to give some really early levels and a very fast level six. And with that, we'll see ya. Early movement starts these runes for both teams. Looks like they want that bounty rune. Who's going to get the 50 golden experience? Uh, let's see. Bounty rune already picked up by the Tidehunter. Top the end is snagged by Luo. And with that, we'll run through our lineups very quickly. Not going to have any level 1 blood. Banana will be on the Jakiro. Mu will be playing your Puck. Looks like uh, Mu will be soloing, or no, maybe dueling now like with Banana. So it's a support Jakiro this time around, Sid. Rabbit goes mid as the faceless void. That puts Sangshine into the support role for the Morphling of Howe top lane. And then on the Radiant Squad, June is the offlane Tidehunter. 430 will be the Spectre dual lady mid with Chizbug's uh, Lich. And in the bottom lane goes Luo on the Invis Brewmaster. And Chuan on the Shaman. He's taking an early point in the nuke. And we'll use it to harass this puck back a bit. Yeah, I think this bottom lane is going to be really interesting to watch. Because this is a very unusual lane. I think... You mentioned it yesterday when we were casting that uh, teams like EG had started running dual lane off lanes with Jakiro. Yeah. But I think they mainly did that on the Radiant. Is that true? Yeah, it was a. Uh, they didn't do it that many. It was like two or three times, but it was a Tuscar Jakiro dual lane, and the Tuscar was support in the. At least the one that I saw with the universe handling the Jakiro. They did it once on the Dire, at least, I believe. Okay. But yeah, this this bottom lane should easily be won by Newbie. They're playing dual range against a melee hero in the lane with a pretty weak level 1 support and Shadow Shaman for a dual lane like this. So they should just be harassing Lua a hell of a lot and just keep Liquid firing him, drain him from regen, and then just free farm the puck, more or less. Well, IG now rotating the Lich down towards the bottom lane. We'll see if Cheesebug wants to go for a bit of stacking here or just wants to secure... Uh, that potential bounty rune for his team. It's just so satisfying to pick up, man. Even though, like, you you kind of know in elections, like, yeah, it's not that big of a deal, 50 experience, but, you know, it just feels good. It feels good to pick it up. And IG it's will go for it. in the mind of... Oh, wait a second. Who's actually getting caught out here? It looks like it's Banana with IG supports coming in. Ice Path will connect onto. Probably enough to keep him alive, but great body blocking from low, nearly getting Tron in range. He will be in range. Can't say in the salve of Banana, even. Nobody gets the room bottom yet, despite five heroes going for it, but IG will claim that one, and then to boot, they also pick up the double damage rune on the Tidehunter. They're four for four on these runes. They got the first two before the creep spawn, and another two now. And at least the Spectre solo mid against the Void, or at least early on. Yeah, she got a little bit of a head start with the Lich, of course, and does have two points in Desolate, so if they get into a fist fight here with, uh, in a good position for Ferrari, he is probably going to win that one on one uh, especially with Rabbit scaling the way he has so far. Two points in Time Walk, one in Backtrack, and none in Time Lock. Without Bash being available, I think uh, Ferrari can just fight him head on here. He also has plenty, he has plenty of Tangos. There's only a Salve remaining here on Rabbit, and I'm, interesting, I'm interested to see which path he takes here. If he goes for a bottle for this mid lane, which is... Void is like one of the last heroes in the game you generally want to get a bottle on, but perhaps with the rune changes, he considers it worth it. 
Yeah, I, I'm with you there. Just it is some nice regen. Uh, actually, June almost died top lane. They were barely unable to finish him off. Uh, guess they just chase him now with nukes. But who gets caught up on him? The shackle clap is there. And we will get the first blood. So IG end up connecting. Newbie narrowly missing top. You know, I thought he was gonna hit level two sooner. He was standing here with a double damage ring, leeching experience, and uh, Skara did not seem like he was able to harass him out of lane, but didn't get it and uh, barely ends up surviving. As we see a wraparound from Sang Shang. But Jun now has he's got his level two, he's got that point in crack and shell, and he's also pretty far back in this lane. Gonna be tough for Newbie to dive him. Newbie must have done a really good job in the top lane though, keeping him on level two four minutes and generally radiant tides tend to get pretty good experience, especially with a boot starter against a dual lane, but I'm assuming Samsung just really harassed him out heavily with these clarities up there and put some good pressure. He's also going to get the bounty rune. There's a haste bottom. No one is going for that right now, so it looks like the Dire will actually get both runes this time around. And maybe there's a potential gank on Ferrari coming with a hasted Jakira. Well, oh, who's getting ganked is the question. Chuan's waiting for this one. Anchor Smash will catch on side chain. He doesn't have boots just yet. Chuan does. I wonder if he can run down the sky. Maybe he needs one more auto attack to get the kill. He's very slightly faster. 10 MS more with no boots. And he'll finish it off. Gets the kill on the sky of Mage. But, oh, how missed his waveform? He whiffs the waveform on a June that was retreating basically straight back. Now looking for the body puck. The ice pad also whiffing here from Newbie. Misfiring all over the place. Still diving Tron under the tower. But Tron turns to auto attack. This will be the death of Banana. June now in pursuit. He's got Anchor Smash going down in a few seconds. But can't get a range to use it again. I think IG are going to be really happy with that last trade as well. Of course they're happy with the kill they just got on the Skyrath Mage for free. But even trading off Chuan for, uh, for Banana here. The, the big deal is that Tidehorn gets the solo experience. He's now almost level 4, and he wasn't doing too well, but just one kill like this takes him really close to uh, to a fairly timely level 6. Meanwhile in our mid lane, we could see these heroes rotating off the, off the mid fairly soon. 430, level 5, about to hit 6 with this creep wave rabbit already there, and uh, I'm wondering if we're going to see some early tele an early teleport skill on the void, or just a haunt to counter gank these side lanes, because it seems like both teams are out for blood sins. A lot of aggression early on. And not even just the rotation, just the way they're playing in this bottom lane. Constantly going for harass and chasing quite a bit. Beware the beware the level 6 Spectre at 6 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Not so good to try for with. Having Haunt this early on with 3 points and Desolate means the side lanes are really really dangerous to even try to commit on a kill on for, uh, for Newbie, to be honest. This there's so much turnaround potential when you have an early level 6 on the Spectre, and the supports on IG have more than enough to, to buy Spectre time to get in. The Shackle is a very long duration disable. There's a slow on Lich. Uh, if Tide wants to level Gush, there's a slow on that lane as well, but I don't think he will for now. And even Brewmaster with the Clap and soon to be uh, the Primal Split will also be able to, uh, to buy a lot of time for the Spectre. So IG with a good early game with this kind of lineup, I think this is the ideal situation for them. Their lineup was not necessarily supposed to win early game, but do very well mid game. If the early game also goes their way, this could uh, this could get really scary for newbie very fast. For now, they are getting out farmed quite heavily, though. Rab oh, Rabbit's gonna haunt in bottom lane. They've gone with the shackles on banana, and he'll look for the kill. Gets it as well. So they get one kill with the haunt. Now 430 will have to hoof it back to mid, but. I do want to point out the CS. Rabbit, who was once trailing 430, there were a couple early Lich Knights, it's been 1v1 for the majority of the lane, is now way up. 36 and 13 to the 19 and 4 of the Spectre, with the points of Time Lock and just constantly ferry region. He's been able to out CS him, and in the top of how his 40 feet, 44 creeps and 27 denies. It puts June with that fast level 4, still at level 4. He just hasn't gotten anything lately. Denies are more valuable in this patch. I mean, it's something to That's mention. That's true. Oh, June. June is so dead. Rabbit with the rotation here. How actually just waiting for the Chronosphere to end waveforms in an easy kill here. So, yeah, you're right. The, the laning phase for Newbie, as far as farm goes, easily going in their favor. Uh, but the kill's against them. And because of that, they're slightly ahead on experience in gold, but not by too much. So, oh, Banana in the mid lane. Going to take a lot of damage here. Desolate is not proccing yet. Now it will. This will be another kill here for Ferrari on his first. He has an assist from that bottom lane. But I want to point out, if if you're fairly even on gold, and you're running a lineup with Spectre, this is perhaps the hero in the game that's the best at fighting, even if you're at like... If you're at a 10k golden experience deficit, but your Spectre is doing fine, 
this is one of the best comeback heroes in the game, just because of how much spread damage it actually does, so... I think IG will be okay with this. Uh oh, Moo! Don't get bashed! Don't get bashed! He tries to orb out! Chase bug nuked him, he tried to orb with a haste and chased him, and he tried to orb over the tree line, but... Didn't make it past the Roche pit. Fortunately, he will be denied by Roche. That was a slightly clowny engagement. Yeah, Lich got to the ace route first. But yeah, I, 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 you make a good point that Spectre is a very good comeback hero. I think your other point from earlier is equally well taken, just that in general it's harder to take to snowball an advantage in this patch, it seems, with the tower glyphs, the comeback mechanics if you overextend. And I'm not sure there's a scarier carry than a Spectre to, to overextend against. Like, a buyback con is just absolutely devastating. The one good thing that Newbie have, of course, that we haven't really talked about is Morphling is very good against Spectre. Uh, making a replicate of a Spectre who has either a Radiance or a Diffusal Blade or something like that, it becomes a very powerful illusion. It also has, I believe, both Desolate and Dispersion work completely on the replicated illusion as well. Yes. Uh, so it is a very, very powerful tool that Newbie can uh, can turn on IG as well. And We'll see what path Ferrari takes. I love seeing him going for the Urn build. This is a, a build that gained a lot of popularity over the last, I think, just a month or maybe month and a half. People never used to get this in Spectre, but it solves a couple of problems for Spectre. It gives early tank ability, it gives them a little bit of mana regen, which Spectre actually does need. And of course, being part of a lot of kills early on with Haunt rewards you a hell of a lot when you have that Urn. IG are on the smoke. They don't have level 6 on their Lich yet, but they'll probably get it if they can open with a kill here. Haunt's ready, and Hal's waved in. Ravage can follow this up, Spectre can join the fray, the desolate damage will quickly stack up, just slashing his way right through that morph regen, and it's not enough, even with the strength morph. Well, bottom lane, Luo chases out move, but there will be an orb away, he silenced him just in the nick of time. If that clap comes through, that's a kill. But good directions by Moo to hold the line there, and it will be IG threatening for a tower top. Unfortunately for Newbie, they creep pulled at an awkward timing, which... Means there's no creeps to kind of draw the pressure off this tower. Oh, we won't get the tower yet. It will do quite a bit of damage. I don't think he wants to do anything here. Unless if IG stick around a little bit with it. They have Chrono. They Ravage is on cooldown. They have the Chronosphere of Rabbit. I don't know if they saw him coming from the river. Now they will. He's going to go in. Nice Chronosphere. Catching June on the periphery. And 430 a bit farther down. But Chain Frost to turn this one around. Bouncing on a rabbit. And then that's really about it. Still, Clap will follow this up. And it's enough to get the kill on him. The Void dropping the Jakiro as well. This did force out a Bruce Clip. But if they can kill a Pal as well, it'll be worth it. Cyclone? Ah, uh, they, they don't have the damage for that. So they have their level 6 on Shaman. Not yet. Chuan desperately trying to get that up in the mid lane. It's pretty incredible how little damage they dealt to the Spectre. So there was a full Chrono, Jakiro did what he could, there was a couple of uh, Arcane Bolts on top of it, but no uh, no Mystic Flare yet since Skyrath is only level 5, but Ferrari took like half his health in damage. It's the one point dispersion, it's the uh, poor man's shield, and the quite a bit of health he's got from that urn, just... I feel like this is such a good build, and now that we see it played, I, I mean... As with most other builds, this build has probably been used on and off for a very long time, but at least in the competitive circuit, I don't recall seeing it for a very long time until recently, and it just makes you wonder, why not, right? It's, It just seems so damn good on my turn. It's just such a cheap item, and like, you get you get one kill with two urn charges, saves you a fountain trip, that's like a salve or two that you might have had to ferry out, and it might well be worth it just for that. And they'll go for the tower to my top lane, unable to get it. Now the brew comes in. Lua does have his blink dagger and they're gonna hop forward. Chasey on the banana, he got off a nice path on three. It was a nice one, but not enough. His 430 will secure the kill and still manage to stay in the mid lane. He'll begin harassing Moo, who has a coil, gets staggered, the urn's on him, and Moo will orb and try to retreat, but this urn might just take him down on his own coil break. We'll be there. Moo still dropping the wind up for like 430 sticks up. He's got a, an urn, but can't use it. He'll end up giving up a, a very slight kill streak there. And. It will be the Morphling that picks it up. Suddenly, how getting pretty bit far. 1600 gold. Already the, the makings of the Lakosphere on the way with the Rift Health out. The Perseverance can be completed. He's, you know, we might see like a 17, 18 minute Lincolns and perhaps even a bit faster if he can find a tower. Or so. I mean, how often do you see a game where the score is 11 to 3 and the gold is pretty even? Oh, they're going to go in June here. The Mystic player is now available. He is a total goner here. How will claim that kill as well? TP from Chizbug. He does not have ultimate yet. He's 10 seconds off, and maybe he's gonna get killed off as well here, but Luo is hanging in the wings. He's gonna jump in. 
Blade clap to initiate this one. Lua doesn't have his split for eight seconds though either. Brewmaster not gonna die for this. The question is if he can at least get a trade. And for now it seems no. He's not able to blink, but the liquid fire will wear off. Do they get off another nuke on him? No. He's doing that 4:30 on the other side of the engagement. He's rejoined the fight. He kills off banana. Now the brew split, but it's right as how wave forms out. He has a teleport scroll ready. Is he gonna be able to use it? There's still a sight for the cancel that he gets pursued out 4:30. Just not bothering to go for him. They're really looking for the scarf mage. Now they back up for how the urn charges there. The desolate damage, just annihilating the morphling. And he ends up dropping quickly. Rabbit will TP out and then a bloody fight on the bottom lane. Tower did go the way of the faceless void. But while that was happening, Tron hit his level 6 and, and he cracked the tier 1 mid. So, tower trade was even. Then. I, I mean, Sims, like you said, it's it's dead even. 13 to 5, your score. But newbie are just CSing so well right now. They're morphing at 75 CS. And the, the voids of 56. And that puts them for the two highest farmers, like... 30 to 40 CS up on the two best on IG. Yeah, if the CS was even in this game, this would be looking really grim for Newbie, but they are holding on pretty well because of that uh, CS differential, but now Morphling has died twice, and I think that's the most important thing that's been happening in the last six minutes. I believe he... Uh, yeah, around that time. He got killed in the top lane, and now he got killed in the bottom lane, and it, it does delay his impact quite a lot. It, when he's going for this build, which which looks to be a Lincoln's into... I'm, I'm guessing Lincoln's into Ethereal Blade, the very classic build. Delaying that impact so maybe your Spectre can overtake him at the right point in time is going to be absolutely huge, and looks like Ferrari, speaking of the Spectre here, will be going for um, the Diffusal Burst, which, by the way, got changed, so maybe we... Uh, should pay a little bit of attention to that. It's now cheaper. I would say in most cases it's worse on level 1. Or no, it's worse on level 2, rather. Level 1 burns more mana than it used to. It used to be 20, uh, or was it? it? used to be 20 and 35. 20 and 36, and now it's 25. Uh, yeah, and now yeah. it's static 25, but the upgrade of it goes from 20 agility to 35 instead of 25 to 30, so... It's one of the items I have a little bit of a hard time placing exactly whether it, when it's better or whether it's better or not, but... It's Man. cheaper. Anyway. Look at 430. He goes so deep for the Scarf mid. And end up surviving. The follow up comes now from a Ravage, which moves, matches the face shift, but it doesn't matter. They just nuke him down anyway. And now Rabbit's caught out. He's got a Chrono Spear, and it's a perfect one, except there's nobody here to help him. Oh, he can't even call Cheese Punk. This Lich is too damn tanky. And in the end, we'll get him. Pal will try and finish him, but does he make his way out as a replicate? Tries to send it backwards while Rabbit chases forward, gets a bash. But Tidehunter's there to assist on the re the defense, and Rabbit will be forced back in. And they did lose their Spectre. A time walk forward from Rabbit. Is he going to go for this Earth Panda as he despawns? Gets Boulder Toss. Cyclone doesn't have it pulling down. They'll wave it again a little. Still chasing, but the evasion here is decent. Has a has some points in Drunken Haze if he needs it. Might want to throw one out of Rabbit just to prevent these bashes. And they continue to stagger the path backwards towards the radiant side of the map. But the chase continues. Another leap forward. This time from Hal, waving it over the top. And Sunshine's also joined the fight. It's gone so long that Cheesebug has respawned, rejoined the fight. So to his 430. Mystic Clear completely jives. Now it's going to go the other direction. We're ping ponging down this bottom lane. 430 will lead the chase the other direction. Hal, trying to go back in on G as a wave for the one second. He can't get it off the blink and clap line. And 430 ended up getting that kill on the Skyrun. They overextend majorly. Newbie give up four kills. And what was once a very even game suddenly begins to look a little bit IG sided. Leading 21 to 8 in kills, 3 to 4,000 in gold, and 4,000 in experience. They've got all their big ultimates sent. They've got the Spectre now completely actually a Yasha. And I imagine it might even just be a straight mantle. We'll see if he wants to go for that defusal, but. Very early combat-centric Spectre build, and it's, it's working beautifully. Yeah, and once again, it seems like Newbie have the same problem that they did in Game 1. The, the timing and the synergy just doesn't really seem to be there compared to what we saw at TI4. The, the initiation timings, the spell usage, it's just not as crisp as what we're used to seeing, and... IG, on the other hand, seem to be uh, seem to be playing a, a really good game of Dota, to be honest. Like Just like in Game 1, they're almost always one step ahead, or get a little bit of a better angle for the fighter, make some better decisions, especially the overextension seemed to be the story for Newbie in both games, that they simply... they went too far, it seemed, in, in a couple of the fights here, which is a little uncharacteristic looking back at TI, where they were pretty much had some of the best decision-making in the whole tournament, but... Well, maybe uh, maybe they need to to get a little bit back in it, into it. And of course, with their new uh, player added, Rabbit, perhaps they they need a little bit of time to get used to playing together. 
And they are going to try and sneak a rush in here. Rabbit time walked into the pit, the rest of his team smoked in, and with Liquid Fire here to slow down the rush and attack speed, and a constant mesh for the Mask of Madness, so this will be a fairly effective Roshan attempt. Though that said, they're giving up quite a bit for this. The tier 1 bottom is going to go down. The Morphling is split pushing top to try and hold them off, and Spectre will also hold the line there. And it is taking a long, long time. Ravage is ready, Pot is ready, Channing Cast is online, Brew Split is online. If for some reason IG gets suspicious, this could end poorly, but it seems they won't. At least for now, Rapid getting bashed. They'll need someone else to tank this Roshan for a while. They'll bring in four. Now five heroes move. Just waiting near the bouncy rune, which Hal will bottle up. To go for that side lane bottle. I think something we'll see more of now in this patch is just a secondary bottle pickup on a lot of teams. Even heroes that don't necessarily normally go for it. And they will at long last get the Aegis. And there's only a five minute Aegis now instead of six. So that's the other, the main change, I guess, worth noting in this patch. Yeah, curious to see how they're going to use it. Uh, they do put it on the Morphling here, so... Probably going to see some very aggressive play out of Hal. I think that's when he's... When he's at his best is when he feels like he can commit in fights. He is one of the more aggressive carry players in my book. Sometimes he overextends heavily because of it, but... Just overall... Having an Aegis on the Morphling, it's about as safe as you can get as a carry <laughs> If he and, dies uh, twice, you know he really, really screwed the pooch. <laughs> Uh, and, and yeah, it's, I agree with you there. How is old to me a lot like the most. But bottom line, Blinket initiation comes out from June. He'll just evaporate the Jukiro. And how will wait for him? He'll go to the left while his replicate heads to the right. But 430's there to kill off the replicate. And how is going to die once? The question is, does he die twice? Hex will cool down in five seconds. Four seconds now. 430 in position. They'll have the Hex ready to kill him. gets the silence off. Oh no, it's trouble for Twan. Wait for him, wait to get him, but I'll still finish him off. And now the Chronosphere comes through. Holding the Brew Split blocked in place. Like simultaneously trying to work on the Tide Hunter and finish him off. Ends up going down. And now Hal chases Cheese Bug into the tree line. Wait for the TP. That ain't gonna happen. Punched by the shotgun. That's 430. Gets Bash trying to retreat over this cliff. He'll throw his dagger out that direction. But the, they're there to greet him on the side of Newbie. And suddenly we go right back the other way, Sims. Four deaths on IG. The Roshan also that Newbie took earlier, and it's not quite a dead even game, but it's getting damn close. Sorry for the sneeze in the background. So if you're hearing, okay, I might have to explain this. If you're hearing a little bit of noise once in a while, it's because I'm not alone where I am. We're like four or five people sitting here. So when there is a little bit, they're, they're doing a really good job at being quiet and letting me do my thing. But sometimes they're like sneezes are kind of uncontrollable. So I'm sorry for that. I can't really mute on top. How, how dare you? Unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah, we're trying to make everything come together, but yeah, that, that Morphling, uh, that team fight, the Aegis of Morphling really making the big difference there. They got so much value out of it right here, a newbie. With this new version, right, they were starting to trail on Golden Experience, and if, you, if, you're, if you're ahead like IG were and you lose a fight like that, was that 4-1? to one? Just look at that yeah. massive dip in experience in Gold. It's a full-on comeback for newbie just with that one team fight. Yeah, part of that was the Roshan, to be fair, like that first dip, but the big dip was the fight. And in fact, as the graph equalizes, they're now leading. Yeah, it's a, it's definitely a big swing. We'll see if IG can, can spin it back their way, though. The Spectre has picked up an ultimate orb. And to me, Sin, this is a hero that level... He just His damage output just racks up by several orders of magnitude, I feel, when he gets the Manta style. Because his illusions, as you briefly mentioned, not only does the Replicate get Desolate, but so too do the Manta illusions. So he hits incredibly hard, has his max Desolate now, and he's very close to the recipe. We're going to see this come out very soon. This could be a big item for IG. We're going to see if Lip used by the Radiant for the mid lane. Don't know whether they're going to hold this tower. It doesn't look like anyone is able to reinforce, but actually Hao is a little bit hesitant here. He's going to start joining his team instead. Maybe fake backing here so that they can turn around and take the fight in mid. The top tower will go down. Tron will be claiming that with the Must Serpent Wards, and that means they're on cooldown. If a team fight should break out right now, all abilities are ready for the, for the Dire here. And I think they want more blood. No, I, I'm, I'm with you there, man. I think they do too. <laughs> uh, one other thing with Manta Style is... Uh, the recipe is 100 gold cheaper, but the vision is different. You don't get the flying vision from it anymore um, when you pop it. You used to get 1,000 just for like a brief second when you did. So I, I'm not sure it's a huge change, but just, just want to try and mention all the changes for those who have not had a chance to you know, review and, and study the patch notes yet. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, the, so the, the Manta style was also, it was kind of random. It seems like in, it seems like a... 
It's like, why should that give you flying a legacy vision? A legacy thing from from Warcraft 3 where when you use it, you get flying vision for, what was, what was it, a quarter of a second or something? Whoa. You got a thousand flying vision. Seemed really, really random. And some of those weird things are, are starting to be phased out of the game because they don't really make any sense, so... But yeah. yeah, the 100 gold reduction in cost is, is great for a hero like Spectre, of course. I'm still waiting for Ferrari to probably go for either a heart or a defusal now. What do you think is better? Hmm. I think Mana Burn is really powerful against Morphling. And you, you can also purge off the, uh, the Mask of Madness buff, right? So that could be pretty good versus the mm, Void Yeah, that's as well. a new thing, right? Um, maybe you can? Can you? Uh, I think you can. I'm not sure. That's actually a really good question. Might well be done. one worth googling, but... <laughs> Hal top lane? Oh, he runs right by IG. Unfortunately, he's in Viz. More for one of those heroes that's a bit harder to see when he's in Viz uh, for, the, for the casters. But now he runs by a sentry. It will spot out Hal. The blink and a gush here. He's going for the tower, but he gets hit, and he does, hasn't started strike morphing. We'll get it completely picked off there. Bottom lane, the newbie, trying to push it. And... Oh, they also cut off the Chikiro. 430 dunk deep behind enemy lines for that. But now back to bottom. We're low. Has thrown out a Drunken Hazel. Blink forward. DKBs. Now he splits. They'll need a cycle in here to get in range. Maybe not. The downtown Boulder toss. Long rock. Man, that, that was super long range. But Fire Panda's blocking out the Earth Panda. Sanke will get off his Mystic Fire and some dropping anyway to Chiz Bump. While to the right side of the fight, Rabbit retreats. Suddenly, three heroes back the other direction. Newbie dropped them this time. They lose their very far more fleet. And they will retreat out. Chase is still ongoing. But I don't think they're going to range here to kill off Rabbit. He even has time walk again, so he was going to be perfectly fine. But a 3 for null exchange here going the way of IG. And I just have to say that the longer this goes, the better this position is for IG. If they can keep the gold and experience even, they're going to be looking really, really good very soon. Um, of course, with the next item coming up for Ferrari, I agree with you completely. I hope it's going to be a Diffusal Blade. I think it's the better choice, in particular against the Morphling, like you said. Then we're just approaching a late game where I think you are going to run out of steam. The leap comes through, and, and then the follow-up Ravage is there. Oh, now they go, the desolate, triple desolate damage, murdering now. But now he's reinforcements, so that won't be an issue for him, and we'll try to hold the line. It's a bit of an overextension here from IG. They need to back the hell out. No Ravage for now. No Brewmaster split. The Lich is going to drop. Now Void leaping forward onto June. Who knows? Two kills the other way. They only lose to Jakiro. 430 dagger through the pit. We'll end up retreating now. This bottom lane, man, it's like they go one direction. It's suddenly a newbie victory. Then they go the other direction. IG are winning the fights. Uh, I suppose if, if a team doesn't want to swing, then they should just not push this lane after they win an engagement. It's like they're rolling the dice for every fight, almost. <laughs> if you get an even number, the team fight is won by Nubin. and if you get an odd number, it's won by IG, but... We've rolled a little more odds than evens then, I guess, or the odd fights have been a little more impactful, because they're still ahead by 12 kills, but it's just such an even game on gold regardless. Oh, they're going to go on how we can off that desolate damage. That's just oh ridiculous. That's with strength more fun. The wards were hitting him, to be fair, but yeah, that's, that's just incredible. And this is before he gets a Diffusal Blade, before he gets like a Butterfly, if he wants to go that route later on this game. And that's without any real Dispersion damage in the fight, you know, he's not taking anything, he's just dishing it out. I think we're seeing some of the power of the Spectre here. I still think he was reasonably strong at 6.81 in certain scenarios, but especially nowadays, where the push is a lot weaker. I'm expecting we're going to see more of this hero set. He's looking scary. Yeah, it is. It's always been a good hero, and like you said, it's probably been underappreciated. Now it's reaching a point now with the new version and everything, and the buffs it's received, and the nerfs other heroes have received. It's, it might come back to its former glory. There was a point when Spectre was pretty much a first phase pick. It's been a long time since then, but it's always kind of been a... It's been like a, a pocket strategy for most teams to last pick that Spectre in some games and really make great use of it. And I think it's going to be more common now, to be honest. They're looking for the leap in mid lane. And Concussive Shot was there, but not before the Shackle will come. Or sorry, the Hex, rather. On the same chain, they go. Now the Brewmaster's gonna split. He popped his DKB right as he did, so you've got a double magic immune Earth Panda. June gets caught out in Chronosphere. He won't get off a Ravage for this one. So it actually was cooling down anyway. It wouldn't have mattered. Now looks to retreat. So the Brew split a bit wasted. Fortunately, they don't lose their Spectre, who is off farming the bottom lane. You know, Sin, the one difference is, like, the old, old Spectre that we used to see, I mean, I'm even looking back, like, to, I don't know, 2012, but, like, a couple years ago, it was always, like, just pass the farm your Radiance and just don't really fight too much early or be very selective. This is a, kind of the new, the new breed of Spectre, very aggressive, 
the early urn picked up you point out and it's it's not more interesting of a style to watch for me at least so i'm i'm actually enjoying the specter picks whereas sometimes in the past would be like uh specter yeah, it, it is definitely this, this aggressive style. I also think it's, honestly, it suits the hero better than playing this really static style, because you have a global ability. You want to get, at the very least, get some assists and a couple of kills if you can. Uh, and it, it's a very unique carry in that sense. In comparison to other hard carries, it's one that can be really active early on, so why wouldn't you be? Just farming it statically in a safe lane for a very long time, com similar to like what you often do with a morphling, just doesn't seem as good on a hero who can really contribute this much, so... I can agree. I think oh, I you can't get caught now! You're the gem carrier! They lost their puck. Got cross blasted, yeah, then got thought, text. Early aggression with Spectre and then into solid late game, I think is the overall most effective way of building the hero right now, which is why the urn is just such a great pickup. And yeah, this Roche is probably going to be uncontested. Chrono's still on cooldown for another 5 seconds, Morphling is in the wrong side of the map. Yeah, there's no contestant for this. Oh, uh, unlike you said, Spectre is if not the best carry in the game, but definitely on that short list along with heroes like Storm, who just used the Aegis so incredibly well. So he'll pick it up now. And our Morphling for how has continued his farm a bit. He's picked up a Mantis style, but still isn't much of a hitter as far as Morphling picks go. Hasn't gone for the, the early shotgun build, hasn't gone... Um, hasn't gone for a... Uh, a butterfly or anything like that, and I'm actually wondering what Hal does from here. Does he just try to go for the man fight build? Does he go back for a shotgun? Or does he go more for split push? I mean, I'm not sure what you would get other than a butterfly in that case, but... Yeah. It's it's just odd to see a Morphly not going shotgun, because there was a period where... Like, the past years, like, every game, Lincoln Spirit shotgun, maybe a BKB shotgun once in a while. Or even a shotgun The weird shotgun. thing about this is I don't even think it's a good Mantis style game. One of the main things you need to consider when you get a Manta to join teamfights with it is whether the illusions will actually survive. And you're playing against Ravage, Chainfrost, Ethershock, Clap, and even the Refraction, but that's kind of... Or, sorry, Dispersion, but that's kind of minimal. But still, there's, there's a lot of abilities that can just kill these illusions off. And if you use Manta style when you have a lot of agility, these illusions have, like, no health whatsoever. So, mainly the split push factor, I guess, is what Hao's looking for, just to maximize his farming and then... I would say going shotgun after this is probably going to be too late. I think it's time to uh, to get some really hard-hitting items like a butterfly. Newbie got caught out mid lane. There was a blanket initiation. Clap onto the Jakiro. Now Spectre trying to chase down some more on the other side of the fight. The Morphling will kill off the Tidehunter. Did it kill off a Ravage for this one thanks to the Chronosphere Rabbit. But 430 is still here and he's quite healthy. One bash for the Void coming out. Now the Coil connecting on two. Rabbit leaping in again onto Tron. But this Spectre is just slapping them from the sides of the fight. 430 might be the last man standing for his team though. Three have fallen, Luo stands strong, Hal's out of mana, he'll end up dropping, and oh, they just have to ignore him. They'll cycle him up in the air, but as he comes back down to earth, he just completely out damages the void, no longer has a BKB, and well, keeps on working on Hal, who's rejoined the fight, he's brought back to come back in, they need this 430 kill, he's got an Aegis, if they kill him once, maybe they could kill him twice. Four heroes dead, the fifth was in the ages, Ice Path waiting, 430 caught out, it's gonna be a complete throw the other way, five heroes fall, the ages drops as well, I think all they got was a Jakiro and a Morphly to bump back for that one. And oh my goodness. There's there's one thing we haven't really talked about that much, and I think it is the mentality of the players, like how they feel like the game usually goes at this point, right? You're playing the Radiant lineup, you see you have like a 15 kill advantage, you've taken towers, you've got Roshan, you've got the Aegis. Now under usual circumstances in 681, the gold and experience balance would be really different from what it is right now, so... Just... How, how used the players are to playing at this point and how what fights they think they can take, they need to revise it because... The gold and experience graphs aren't gonna look like you usually think they do, and... IG there just... They really got to pay for it. They thought they were further ahead than they were and just took a, a really poor fight here. If they were able to get a decent Ravage off, probably would have been a much better fight. But great Chronosphere, which I missed the start of. But Rabbit caught him out and they were able to just finish him off with Hal's Morphling to assist. And without Ravage, IG, it was a little bit of a, like a scattered fight, I guess. And that is off to our Spectre excels, but it was mostly IG that were scattered and Newbie that were able to stick together just without getting caught by the Ravage as the fight wore on, so... Yeah, just not the best engagement for them. Regarding Spectre, he has not gone for a Diffusal Blade, he's not going for a Butterfly or Heart. He's gone back for a fairly late Radiance on 430. This is something you mentioned Morphly could replicate him, and 
Now he gets a... Uh, well, I guess any kind of specter item is generally going to be an illusion-based one, but... Nonetheless. Yeah, the good thing there's Forget the radiance. The two good things about radiance are, first of all, it's, it's going to upgrade his farming speed quite a bit. He's going to pick up the pace here and, and probably overtake Morphling if, if the game continues like it has so far with this tower going down. He's a thousand gold behind, but... No. Maybe if, if Howl farms effectively, I think they're going to be farming roughly at the same pace, but... Oh, they're actually going to go on him again for Ari in the middle and going to get called out here. Chronosphere, Mystic Flare, and even a point blank range, they just can't keep him alive long enough. Ravage came through, and Spectre ends up getting a triple kill from the grave. Just the illusions doing the work at the end there. The Jakiro Pocket Scarf made all ended up going down. Two, oh, two over in this vicinity as they scattered to the winds, and the Jakiro down here. Yeah, got off the hawk before dying, then the Ravage came through, and the illusions finished the job. It looked really nice for Newbie, Sid, but he pressed the R button. <laughs> hey, Radiance for a very strong in that situation. Man, that was unexpected. Yeah, and the good the good thing about Radiance, so the first thing is the farming pace. The second is the way these fights are developing, they're really... It seems like these fights go really long. They have Ravage, they have Chain Frost, they have a Bruise Split. They have so incredibly much control that they can force the fights to last for, like, 15 seconds if they use their abilities correctly and get the right initiation. And then the Radiance Burn does a hell of a lot of damage over time, so... It's probably these two factors that made uh, Ferrari decide to go for it, because generally at 30, 32 minutes, most heroes won't even get a Radiance anymore, because you feel like it's too late, the burn is kind of getting meh compared to if you have it like 20 minutes, and but still, in, in this case and with a Spectre, I still think it's a, it's a great pickup. It's one of the best heroes to get a light Radiance on as well. The other thing that's going to help Newbie is that, or sorry, IG, is that these BKB, the BKB for the Void will start to wear down. It's an 8 second BKB now. Uh, they haven't gone for any more, but the fact that they only have one and that this BKB will slowly lose charges means that your Tidehunter could get really effective later on. He's picked up an Oblivion Staff. He had an early Staff of Wizardry, I'm guessing looking towards a Force, but it seems now he's going back for a Refresher. And with only one BKB, this could be a very potent teamfight item for them. Double Refresher, Brew with Ags level 16, and Spectre late game. You need a very specific combination of heroes to beat this if it gets pulled off correctly, but I actually think Newbie's lineup can potentially do it. Both Void and Morphling scale very well into late game, and how going for this item build he is, he's going to start dealing significant damage soon. Butterfly is only about, let's see how far away, 1500 roughly? And then, well... The question is if IG can actually... They have great split damage, but they don't have that good single target. It's one of Spectre's... It's kind of the only weakness of Spectre, to be honest, is if those Mantis-style illusions do get killed off, the single target damage of this hero isn't that good compared to a lot of other carries late game, especially if you don't get the desolate bonus damage, so... Maybe they can't really deal with the Morphling and Void so well later on. Yeah, it's it's really going to come down to the supporting cast. I think you're the point that's oh, well, hold that thought. They catch out how here he gets caught by a frost blast. And, well, there's your desolate illusions. They even Bruce split to secure this kill. Well, meanwhile the Spectre illusions force a lot of new back. You can see that one haunt bring Sanction down from full HP to 290, and that's without a dagger. That's without a, the hero actually porting in. They they support supporting backline heroes are still quite squishy. But yeah, um, that's definitely true for the Spectre in terms of finishing off the cores. Is not the best single target focus. One thing you can do to solve that problem, though, is to uh, get a Daedalus as one of your luxury items. It's something Spectres do in some games. Of course, it doesn't benefit your illusions at all, but when you get to super late game, your main hero really needs to start hitting. And we could see that being the final item for Ferrari, but I would say before that point, he'll probably want to get both a Diffusal level 2 and a Heart, and maybe even a butterfly as well. Um, and then the, the urn can be replaced with a... Or well, the radiance can actually be replaced as the last item, if you want to. But... Assuming he gets to that stage, Time Lock will come out, or Zakoda Spear follows up for Rabbit. Jumping in on the 430, they'll get the kill on the Spectre. Remember, oh, actually, he has the buyback. He's going to use it now. But no one to the fight for 50 seconds. He's got to run down the middle lane. It seems IG's plan now is... We know that Chronosphere is on cooldown, and there's no Aghanims up. We just gotta fight right now. Jump it under Rabbit, they'll try and focus the Void down. Still getting decent backtracks here, even through the Hex. We'll end up surviving. Although the Spectre makes his way down this middle lane. Morphling is gonna respawn soon, and they are still hanging on for the time being, sent. Ravage, also pulling out for two minutes. They do have Split now. They do have Haunt okay. in 20 seconds, and even... Even though Ferrari's already in the middle of the fight, you saw how much the punt can do as long as he gets it off before he dies, so... 
He doesn't need to use it as a return into the fight mechanism kind of thing, but just dealing that AoE damage is really important. Ah, Chuan. Chuan was gonna bait them in a bit, and the Brew will split to, to follow up this bait. Chain Frost coming in. Oh, bounce mostly just to the illusions. Yeah, it does absolutely nothing to heroes, but Moo, who was phase shifted during that time as he comes out of it, tries to retreat out, won't be able to do so. Now phase shifting again. The chase on the rabbit goes to Hawk. Doing a lot of spread damage, but not finishing everyone off. Sanctuary surviving will end up going down. Barely at the end there, but the Spectre, 430 getting the kill with the Dagger. And now Newbie will try to hold this high ground. The Chrono's all cooled down, it's been such a long fight, they have it to go again, and it's all in free! He found them all, chopping away at 430! Rabbit might have just punished them too much! Cheesebug, a caught out as well, cycled up into the air, he'll end up dropping, it's four heroes dead! They didn't even crack the tier 3, down to 60 HP, still surviving. Roshi, I'm gonna respawn in about a minute, maybe a minute and a half. That's a dieback from the Spectre. That Spectre that you that we were thinking might end up ahead of Morphling Sin, now down 3k, even the Void has surpassed her. Oh yeah, this my. Is, this is really not looking good for IG all of a sudden. That was clearly an overextension. It took too long, simply, and the exact problem that they couldn't bring down a single target fast is what cost them a lot there. They they used the entire haunt trying to chase down it, only getting a Skyrath Mage. They didn't get any of their cores killed off. Uh, they, like, especially Mu just played a really great team fight there. Just delayed them so much, took so much focus, and ended up even surviving. And just when you buy that much time and Void's Chronosphere comes off again, and you get a, a respawn from the Morphling, that's when you can start losing two lanes. How? We'll get Anchor Smash, but he's still hitting quite hard even through that. They'll look for the first lane of Rack. They've already claimed that. Now they hex up How. He ends up dropping in this bottom lane. Rabbit's still steady. Struggle got off his BKB. Just chops away at Tron. Now wants to retreat. Has no time off. Has Chronosphere, though. He'll just drop it, and a defensive retreat will begin. They'll try and nuke down Chun during this time, nearly finishing him off. Not quite able to do so. Sanchang hesitating for a second on his retreat out. Now four stepping away, but he'll be thrown up in the air by Cyclone. The Bruce Foot was deployed, and. They'll end up getting three return kills. They still lost the first lane of Rax. Top one, the job. And, well, the question is, do IG go right back to mid now? The issue may be just buybacks. Let's check for the dire side. They yeah, have history oh, yeah, they're going to push and die now. So let's expect <laughs> to happen. Right no such a good play from Chon, by the way. It probably salvaged the game right there. Getting in like that on the Morphling, getting that kill pretty much on his own. Beautiful support play here coming out from the Shadow Shaman, defending the tower as well with those Mass Serpent Wards, so... Really a good call, exploiting the fact that Morphling might have morphed a little bit too much into agility there. He got very confident seeing that Spectre was dead, but Spectre's not the only damage source that IG has. Oh, and there's even an Axe now on Chuan. These wards are gonna get really scary when he hits 16. And he's almost level 16 to boot. I mean, to be fair, we are 41 minutes in, but that's still pretty good level progression for this support, and... Roshan has respawned. IG were thinking about it, but the one issue for them is without the Shaman Wards, they're just not a fast Roshan team. And it will allow Newbie time to respawn. Haven't really seen a big Roshan fight yet on this patch, at least not in, in this LAN tournament. And the one thing that really stuck out to me is it just the pit feels very small compared to 6.81. So with all these big team fight ults, that could get very ugly very quickly for whichever team gets caught. That's true. And there's actually... this pit could, in theory, be expanded a little bit. It looks like it would be possible to make it at least 10 or 20% bigger while still maintaining the war spot. Oh, Lou on the Lou. That's a really big kill! Now the chase... no, oh, Rabbit's gonna back off. The buyback comes for the brute, and now they may have to retreat. A courier just went down. Uh, Radiance courier, four steps away from Banana. And Spectre Hawk will come out, and they'll focus on Chuan. Can we have off a rabbit stance? Okay, during this time, his BKB will be wearing off soon. And now the Spectre Illusion really begins to pack a punch. He time walks to the north, trying to survive, but they chase him far. 430 on the rabbit will end up getting to kill the point guys back immediately. A crazy fight for a Russian that's not even close. Bounty Run will respawn. Lil, this is great. Hey, that's some gold experience for me. Why the hell not? I'll pick that one up and then go into the pit. And go into the pit they shall. Still no Chronosphere for 40 seconds. Okay, so Radiant Courier died, and it had a, a Perseverance. That might have been the Tidehunter's Refresher. No, not quite. He's actually a little bit short. Jun well, still has the Ravage, though. They have Ravage and Primal Split. And they're chasing. They're going in. Ravage is there. On the two, the clan follow instantly. The backline's down. And this backline has no buyback right now. How? Waving, but it's kind of a midget waveform. Yeah, Cyclone was there, now the boulder toss, now it's still going down. And won't really be able to get a range. We'll end up backing off. 
Oh, that was actually the boulder toss the front of the league. It's not a cyclone. So, Link is not down, but can they rush him? Creeps are pushing into the base. This is taking forever, man. Whoa, getting chased out by Moon. What a clowny engagement it's been. Now throwing him up in the air, and Miles gonna rejoin this fight. See, the Void's got Chronosphere online again. Spectre hot, crawling down in 40 seconds. And all the ults are gonna come around for a second pass. And it seems that the creeps pushing in mid might end this engagement the hard way. Well, they have look, Shaman Ward soon, though. Look at the XP and gold. That is sick. Up and down, it's just constant topsy turvy. How much XP? Did they get 10,000 experience for how much? Three kills? Yeah. 7,000 gold out of this one team fight. Granted, one of them was the Void who had, a, I think, a monster kill streak who got killed off. Yeah, Ferrari got that kill, but just this swing, it's. It's pretty they insane. Just back to dead even again. They didn't take any towers, they didn't take Roche yet. I mean, no one's get. They didn't get the bounty room, don't forget about that. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. That's a yeah, decent that amount from the Void. gave about 2,000 XP and gold at this point. <laughs> yeah, definitely 2,000. <laughs> maybe maybe 2,500. And back into the pit they march. Chronosphere's online. All the big ults have pulled down nearly. Well, actually, Rabbit's still minute off, but the Bruce Blitz ready, the Spectre Haunt's online. They're just trying to leave Hal alone in the pit while the Illusions come in and do the work, but they've managed to replicate a Spectre now. This will be very annoying for IG's Blink initiation. Can just burn them down, prevent them from blinking forward. June Blink's in, Roche will fall, and now Rabbit goes the other way, gets the Bachelor Tron, and with that, should end up getting the kill. The Hawk coming through, killing off the Sky Bait. Rabbit's still chasing Tron, needs to get that damn kill. It's taking him ages. Hal will lose his ages. IG resetting for a second fight with the Bruce Blitz still going. But now the Chrono, they found absolutely everyone. Macro part of all of this up. 430 getting annihilated inside of it. Will end up dropping. He's got a buyback here, but no Han even if he bothered to do so. A newbie, they take the fight directly the other way. They get an ultra kill in the Marpling. And now it's 35 to 43. But it seems like newbie are in full control of this one. This is one of the weirdest games I've seen in a long time. Look at this graph, man! Every- It's not just, like, even those earlier fights is just up and down, up and down. Complete yo-yo of a game. So this is actually dangerously close to being GG, but they do have buybacks on all three dead heroes on the Radiant, I think. Or at least the three main ones. Ty does- No, Brew actually- Brew doesn't. Two minutes. And they're spreading out here. That's where the team fight will be less effective. At the Roche Pit, they had to converge, but here, they can really spread out. Rabbit will just try and slow down 430, who's diving for the Jakiro, but it's the top lane to worry about. House killed off the tower, but now it's gonna Ice Pat to slow down this chase, and now they'll bring Rabbit towards the top side of the map. Just the Morphling Illusions alone, now they've created a replicate which he can use to get more aggressive. Tron bashed out again. Rabbit focusing him down. IG close to having to go to a game three now. He gets the kill. Chronos get ready in one. He'll get it off, but Jethos! Chain Boss not backtrack to ends up going down. Well, how has the cell play? He's just gonna play right around the rosy here with IG. They have a double Ravage though, Sin. Ravage number one. Ravage number two being prepped. But there's no Spectre here dishing out the damage during this time. How will just go for the base now. He's got a buyback if he needs to use it. Focusing heavily on this melee. Rex hasn't finished it off yet. And he'll give up and replicate out. Now it's Moose's turn to try and retreat. He goes down to the low ground, but he gets old chain frost blasted, I should say, and then finished off most likely by a hot. Which will No, he blinks out. He blinks out of the trees. No way does Will live through this. He orbs to the right. He's still running, but the Morphling ends going down the sky and also falling to the Haunt. Those final seconds of the Spectre killing off the Morphling over here, the Skyrath over there. And now the question is, how many buybacks did Newbie have? They've got a buyback of Morphling, a buyback on the puck who's already alive, the Void down for a full minute, but it's nearly Mega Creeps. I just don't know if IG can push it at this point. This is taking me back like four or five years when teams were starting to defend their last barracks with a team with Spectre and made the impossible comeback because the other team would just start suiciding for that last, last barracks, but... There's three minutes on the glyph. Newbie can basically just run down to the bottom lane, push it out, and reach that. IG will have to fight outside the base, and it, it might be what Newbie just realized. So that might have just been a misclick as well from Hal. I'm not sure why he bought back so late. There's nothing he really has to fight back for right now. There's no tower under siege. There's no base to defend right now. Well, they did deny that mid-tier 3, but Spectre is very far away from this and doesn't have haunt, so kind of... 
Seems a little bit like a waste of a buyback. The one thing with the late buyback is it does decrease the penalty, right, for your next respawn, depending on yeah, when you buy back. So I guess it. But that being said, he's still going to be dead for ages if he dies again. Like, I don't know, it's like 100 instead of 120 or whatever, so. It still has a long time. And he's level 24 here. Tron is searching for an opening. He's dropped down on Zerboard. This is a. I guess you'd basically call them the Hod Ward, something that Heroes of New Earth have where you can ward this hill. It's now in Dota 2. And uh, it is a pretty nice ward spot, but also an obvious one to D ward. Will be a point of contest for both teams. Yeah, there. Oh, it's getting pretty tense right now. I think the main problem that IG have is, apart from losing five barracks, <laughs> there is no, no, no problem there, man. They got a void on the enemy team who has 3,800 gold and a buyback. So I feel like Rabbit has really been the big player for newbie in this game. He has had so many good chronospheres that really saved, pretty much lost fights and turned them on head. He's done it time and time again. And now it's not just about the Chronos, but he's actually starting to reach a point now when he can start soloing the heroes in the Chrono as well. He has a Mjolnir, does have the Crystalis, can buy the Daedalus if he wants, but won't have buyback then, so he's saving for now. But he's going to reach that point when he can just basically Chrono the Spectre and kill her off. And there's a heart now on that Spectre. 3,000 HP. With 26 armor. <laughs> Yeah, there's also Frost Armor, but these fights have been so chaotic, I don't think he's had it on him in all of them, and that is actually a pretty big deal against against Rabbit. But yeah, I, it does still get to the point where, with the BKB Void, really doesn't take much damage from the Spectre. Dispersion's not going to hurt you, and, and he's life stealing as well, so he's able to just kind of man up on her. And it is what you mentioned, Sin, just the one weakness of Spectre, I, I guess you would basically say... Isn't like the best 1v1 carry. It isn't really a, a man fight carry, if you like that term. Uh, although she can beat a lot of heroes 1v1. As this build is this is more of the team fight Spectre build. We're not seeing like maybe a, a last item Abyssal Blade or anything like that. So uh, still very strong in those fights, but they are reliant on getting the five man fight. I think the absolutely most important thing is that Tide doesn't get Chrono now. That's the one way IG can pretty much always salvage the fight is if the Chronosphere goes off on pretty much anyone else. As long as they can do double Ravage, they can counter out the Chrono, and the only guy on the Dire with the BKB are there's both Morphling and the Void, but I don't think Morphling is going to be dealing that much damage inside the Chronosphere. So the double Ravage is going to buy so much time that IG can probably turn the fight around. They have the control, it's just their only problem, to be honest, is the Chronosphere. If it wasn't for that, they would have probably won the game by now. By the way, that's a full reign of a kill in here. <laughs> the Russian yeah, it's Might be worth selling though. That's like a, what, it's a 400 gold or so. It's a decent chunk. Yeah. But I'm not gonna see that for now. Banana wool. Oh hey, look what I found, guys. We'll give that back to back to Hal momentarily. That was how crazy that rush fight was. It's just like, just get the damn ages, dude. <laughs> Forget about the rain of a kill. Gonna give it to Jakaro so he can run it home. Yeah, he's he's just a he's Senior a very expensive courier, courier now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's gonna drop it again. Okay, he's gonna let it. You know, actually, that is one her. minor change, but it is something worth mentioning. Is like you can no longer sell items from the rush end, pit, which he used to. Be able oh, to really? Do. Well, because it's not next to the shop, right? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, you're right. So oh, just something I was thinking about right now. Rabbit will come in. Caught out to Rabbit. Caught by the first one, but lose the faceless void. He does have buyback, and they'll find that rate of a kill up. Jeez, bug, the gear not going on it? No, not yet. Hot was used though. One ravage was used, and Mu is pushing in the bottom lane. A nice little victory there for IG, but looks like they can't capitalize too much further on it for now. The most important thing was that they forced the buyback from Void. This means that if they do that again, they can get a lane of Rax. I don't see Newbie standing a chance at a teamfight without the Chrono, so... Can, can they rat it out? Do you think they could, like, base race or split push instead if they needed to? If the Void dies again. Yeah, if the Void dies again for Newbie, I'm saying. Yeah, then the only thing Newbie needs to try to do is make sure they get Mega Creeps during that time. But if Void is out for, like, 120 seconds... I actually think the doc the Radiant lineup with a level 17 Shadow Shaman with eggs will take the base faster than the Morphling will. Um, if the entire team is there and just clubbing away at all the buildings. The thing is, the other heroes on Yubi can't really buy that much time. They have an Ice Path, which is an AoE stun, but apart from that, nothing else really. A Dream Coil, a single Hex on the puck. Actually, with that Hex, maybe they can buy enough time, but... Yeah. IG will be able to deal a lot of damage with Void out of the out of the fight. How really does not want to sell that rate of a kill? For <laughs> some reason, he just ran right by it. He was like standing waiting around for a teammate to smoke, and I'll just leave it there, <laughs> hoping it will prove a distraction to IG and a potential engagement outside the pit. We'll see. Next level strats. Oh, 
I'm not sure about this for Newbie. This could be a big mistake. If they go up to the Radiant High Ground and they get caught off guard, all the ultimates will be ready for the Radiant again. 20 seconds on the Shadow Shaman ultimate, 20 seconds on Haunt. They do have one Ravage only though. But if that one catches Rabbit and he gets killed off, the fight is lost. And it is just such a defensive posture from IG. I will say that the few pubs I've played on this patch, this is how most of them went. If a team had some late game, even if they're maybe not this extreme of an advantage, but even if you're down a lane of Rex or two, just hug your tier fours and wait for the enemy team to push it, because God forbid they overextend. I mean, aside from the lack of buyback on Void, who will now probably get an Aegis, the gold swing is going to be just gargantuan if there's a significant lead. In this case, there's not a big lead, though. Net worth and experience are actually almost dead even, so... That wouldn't actually... In this particular game, it's really not going to be so much about that. Both teams are almost... In fact, they're like at zero, basically. This is really surprising for me, that they give the cheese to Void and the Aegis to the... To the Morphling. I think I would have done it the other way around. Just having the Aegis on the Void to secure that you get that Chronosphere off, I think that's more important. But... Well, we'll see. Maybe with this, Hal can just go incredibly aggressive and force a reaction, and then they can set up the Chrono that way. That's an alternative and way of doing it, which is... The other thing is, Rabbit good. has gotten caught out that way, Sin. Like, they hexed him, ravaged him, and he just died. Yeah. Whereas Morphling is generally a lot more elusive, and also less crucial to their team fight. Rabbit can kill... potentially even solo kill the Spectre in Chrono, and just win them the fight flat out from there, but it's not really something Hal can do, especially not with this item build. He's more of a sustained chip damage kind of hero, not a, a single target burst. No shotgun for him. Um, it is a little bit worrisome. Well, the Rabbit is now ready for the Radiant. They defended long enough to get that back. Should they just wait two and a half minutes? At that point, they have the ages for like a minute to two minutes at least. And the buyback if Rabbit's got the gold for it, though. He's just chosen to complete the Daedalus. It's all about seeing the opening here. If they get a good opening, they should go for it. But Ferrari is the only guy they cannot jump on. If they start opening the Spectre and commit everything to killing him off and he buybacks and haunts, they're going to lose the entire team. So they have to. And they may just lose the game from there. If they can poke and force the Glyph that way, they can just run in Chronosphere and take the Rax and get out. And then they pretty much win the game. Kind of like a Nago, almost. Yeah, almost. But it is going to be pretty tricky to uh, to poke that down because the Radiant have pretty good wave clear right now and they're definitely not afraid of fighting. And Ferrari, just the nature of Spectre, and Spectre is that he can defend the other lanes meanwhile, so he doesn't even need to be there when the fight breaks out. And they're going to go in, silence no. the Star Lua, trying to force IG to use some spells, but IG not Bruce taking that bit. dagger, let's push. <laughs> Blank clap, no. <laughs> Rabbit's like, nah, you're, that's not worth my while. I'll wait for a better opening. Blinken, there's your Ravage! They found out Ravage! He didn't get off the BKP! Can they focus him down? They can! The Void's on the sideline! It's the one thing that couldn't happen, and it's happened! But top lane is pushing it, and Moo's already going straight towards the throne. He says, screw it, man. We don't need to fight. Now with the Haunt down, the Ravage is down. How will try to focus on these buildings, but Glyph was used. It's slowing down the push. How will end up dropping for this? He's going to fall as well. Now the Hex of the Chuan, it's an insta buyback for the more play. The tier 4 is still standing. Barely, though. 117 HP on that one. Void on the sidelines for 100 seconds. But there's so many waves of creeps to fight against if IG want to push in. And they have no big team fight ultimates to do it with. That was just the dream engage from June. He got Morphling and Void in the first Ravage, and then he got them again, plus another two heroes in the second Ravage. That couldn't have gone better for IG. And it just... That was the perfect example of what couldn't happen, like you said. This is why I think the Aegis should have been in the Void, because they would have been able to turn that around. When ha when Hao had the buyback anyway, he could have probably rejoined the fight in a reasonable manner of time, and then they could perhaps turn that around on them, but IG holds strong. They still... <laughs> Just look at the graph again. <laughs> I don't even know. It's absolutely insane, this game. There's 16 kills ahead with a team with Spectre. Oh, and no. Winning. Oh, no. 57 minutes. Oh, that's he's, got, he's got a refresher. And this is the refresher gaming from IG. Game Spectre, at least one of them. I can't, can't believe I didn't mention that one. That's really amazing. If it goes long enough, it can almost be like the, the courier item, you know, like your 7th, 8th item type of thing. Uh, if, if you've got the micro and you feel like you can get it off, but even just as a straight 6 item, it is very strong. 
And that might be what they need. Forget about the refresher orb is that it gives good stats, right? You you generally just think about the second ultimate, but 40 damage, 10 attack speed. Mainly those two stats are relevant for Spectre, but it, it's not like it's just a second ultimate. It, it gives more than just that. Yeah, 40 damage is actually pretty respectable. They're going to mid lane on Hal. Oh no, Hal bought back earlier. He can't die again. The break the Lincoln Spear. They're in decent position to train force it in, and there's no one in position to split push. Two minutes on the sideline. How can Newbie hold from here? There'll be a teleport to the top lane. June's gonna clear this out. That means they don't bring their ravages to the push mid. But, oh no, they don't have Shaman Wards either. They committed those for the kill as well. And there's a Glyph online for the Rivian. It might not be good enough. Tidehunter's buff with some travel, but he's not gonna really use these to rejoin the fight for some time. 45 seconds without the Tide. Now the Hex on the 430. He's in pretty deep. He does have a buyback if he needs to use it. The whole Manta, he still gets caught in the Chrono, but it's an illusion that Rabbit is focusing. Then he finds the real hero, Macro Pyro follow up. Drabbit able to pop cheese and survive as they chase him out further. Spectre pop back. Spectre pop back. Gonna kill off the boy. No buyback call. Gets the kills. It's GG. Thrown it, IG. You've done it. It's gonna be a 2 0 sweep. Movie. No void. No Morphling. For 80 seconds on the void. 65 on the Morphling. What has happened? What in the world is this? Now a Ravage! One! Read him in week, newbie! It'll be a double Ravage from June! The turn! The turn! How did it all go so wrong? I don't know. I've never felt so confused about who was winning a game before, I think. It's like you, you had no idea the whole way through who was actually in the lead. And we had all our theory going into the game with the draft and how these games usually go, and uh, probably the team fight lineup with Spectre is going to do great. And just some really odd fights the entire mid game. The teams were just taking, making weird decisions here. And in the end, IG win after losing five barracks. Oh, that okay. might be the first time I've ever seen a team recover from five wrecks. Now, I've seen it with two lanes of wrecks. Well, it's definitely a rare sight. That's for damn sure. Well, guys, that wraps up our first best of three. IG will take it 2-0 in the end, though not in the way we expected here. On the back of just brilliant team fight execution and one extra buyback. 4.30 is this game send. 27, 9, and 20. And with that, we're going to go to a break. When we come back, we've got another game headed your way. That will also be a best of three. We'll get to see one of the more innovative.